welcome back to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal and today we are going to be testing out something super amazing. So today we are going to put our crickets to work and we are going to turn them into a laser machine. So we are going to do some stuff with our cricket that normally you can't do or you thought you couldn't do that you would need a laser machine for. So a question that we get all the time is, can we use our Cricut to cut into, you know, round objects like this, like tumblers? As silly as it may sound, some people want to know because for example, some laser machines have an adapter where you can put this in and it rotates or you can put them in there, but it's just a question. If you're not very familiar with a die cutting machine, it may be a question that you may have asked yourself. So how can we engrave in these? How can we etch into this powder coating using our Cricut. Well, today we're gonna do it. So what you're gonna need is some permanent adhesive vinyl. So you're just gonna want some permanent, you want something that has a really nice sticky adhesive to it. And then the magic that you're gonna need here is going to be citrus strip. So the citrus strip is going to strip off. So this has been used for the last several years. If you guys are familiar with um, the epoxy tumblers, a lot of people use this to take off this powder coating so that way they can paint this and do what they want to. So this has been around for quite some time, but somebody on TikTok recently had figured out that you could actually, you know, cut out your stencils and then we can use this stuff to etch into this essentially, all right? So you're gonna need your citrus strip, which is going to be your essential tool here, all right? So you're gonna need this. You're gonna want some permanent adhesive and then you're going to want something like a little uh, sponge like this. One that has a really scratchy back like this, like this one's from Brillo and then I just had, I got the sponge, but you could get the solid surfaces if you want to. I've got some painter's tape here, a pair of gloves. I've got transfer tape, and then I've got a little squeegee here as well. And then you're just gonna want some water whenever we're done to rinse this off. So I've got a little pan of water to do this here in the craft room, and then I'll take it off camera and rinse it out in my sink as well. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take you over to my screen just to show you some of the designs that I am using today. All right, so these designs right here, um, I have them all linked down below for you and they come from amazing bundles. This one right here is individual by itself, but I wanted to show you today, how could you take a design like this and utilize it? So this one is so cute. Mama needs a mega pint. And, um, and then these ones right here are just a basic. So something like this, just one color. And even if it's multiple colors like this, you can turn it into one color. All right, so for a design like this, what you wanna do first is remove that offset layer if it has one. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Now, if it's grouped together, you'd wanna ungroup that. And then now we have these ones here. So they're all grouped together. So you can see I'm gonna hit ungroup and then I can click on these individual. So what I wanna actually do is I don't want such a thin piece of adhesive to where this could risk kind of meshing together. I wanna make sure there's a nice gap in between. I'm gonna click on it, use the arrow down or up on my keyboard to give ourselves a gap. So that way everything stays um, cohesive of where it's supposed to be and I'm not gonna shift off. I'm just gonna use that keyboard to start to give me a gap. So once you're done with that, you can select those pieces and you can simply hit attach and that's gonna turn them all to the exact same color. So in case you're wondering if you can use files like that, yes, you can. The next thing you wanna do is measure your cup and figure out how wide you're gonna want this or high. And my width is 3.5 high and then that's gonna give us two inches high, a little over two inches high. So this is perfect. And then I'm gonna cut all of these on the same material. So I'm just gonna change it to black like the rest of them. So that way when I go to hit make it, they're all gonna cut out on the same map. All right, now another thing that I did, and let me just to make sure everything is the exact same black, because sometimes they're different blacks. So we're gonna go ahead and hit make it. And then the next thing that you're gonna do is say on the mat and continue. So what I did whenever I moved these around on the mat was I gave myself a little bit of a border all the way around. That way, whenever we go to put these on our cup, it gives us a little bit of wiggle room to work with. So that way we don't have an accidental bleed or anything with this, this 
product here, if you will. And that's it, so we're ready to cut it out. All right, so once you have cut everything out, as you can see here, I've already weeded everything out. So what you wanna weed out is the pieces that you normally would keep. So you're just going to take all of those away and then we're going to consider this a stencil is what it is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to remove all of these pieces, like I said, that I would normally keep. All right, so what you should have here is a stencil just like this. So we consider these stencils whenever you remove the opposite piece. All right, so let's go ahead and prep up our cups. All right, so now that I have removed any sort of paper or tape off of each of these, they are ready to go. You could go ahead and pre-wash these if you want to and dry them off, but it's unnecessary here at the beginning. Now I'm using a variety here, so I've got some that are painted, some that are um, have that powder coating on them, so I could test out a few different things here. Plus, I've got some different shapes. So a wine glass, we've got something a little bit more, um, I think it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to place that design on here. And then it's something that has this um, different, what do you call it? Like different shapes here where it kind of veers off, if you will. I got these ones from Walmart, by the way, but you can go to Five Below. You could, there's stuff at the Dollar Tree. Um, there's all sorts of different things that you can grab locally, like I said. So I'm really, really excited about that, as well as Amazon. I'll have some link down below to Amazon. Um, so just lots of different places that you can purchase these tumblers. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm gonna go with the most easiest one, which is right here. And what I'm gonna use is one of my squeegees that have that line here because it's gonna allow me to place it just like this. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this one right here, the resting beach face, and then I am gonna go ahead and get a piece of transfer tape. So go ahead and transfer this onto your tumbler just like you normally would. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just get this picked up here. So I'm just gonna rub the entire thing down just like so. All right, so once again, I'm gonna go ahead and get that tumbler down. And what I wanna do is this one has a design here. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this side here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and peel this off. And then we're gonna go ahead and get it down like a taco. I'm just gonna kind of fold it in half here. And then slowly work from one side to the next. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little squeegee tool here just to lay everything down. And we can finish smoothing everything down once we remove the transfer tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You just wanna make sure that there's not gonna be any bubbles around the areas that, um, so any of the stuff can seep underneath. So I'm going at a slow angle. This one in particular is kind of a smoother surface, so it's a little bit harder. Right now it's going smooth, but if I wasn't at an absolute angle here, it'd want to try to come up with me. So I'm just going nice and slow. And so now I'm just going around those edges and really smoothing everything out because if you have a bubble, it's going to get underneath there. All right. So now we're just gonna go ahead and rub, rub, rub everything in. Try not to shift anything. You just really wanna make sure that you have this thing rubbed down to where nothing can seep underneath. All right, so once you're done, it should look something just like this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up really quick so we can get our final on the rest of them. All right, so there is another one. I did this one down towards the bottom because I think it's gonna look really cute like that. So let's move on to the next. All right, so as you can see, I've got a few little lines right here, but I'm not too concerned about that. 
I am more concerned, like I said, as long as it's staying away from these areas here, we're gonna see how it does throughout. So you've seen that I kind of stretched it, I kind of pulled that tape off and then kind of stretched it out. So, you know, get those pieces down and then get these sides nice and stretched out. So I'm just gonna kind of really force these pieces down to make sure they stay away from my design here. All right, so we're gonna roll with it like this. So now what we need to do to all of these is we need to tape them. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the lids off of each and every single one of these. So I'm gonna get those out of our way and then I wanna tape everything. So all the way around the borders where I could possibly accidentally get anything or anything could kind of seep, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure and tape. All right, so now that we have our work surface prepped up, I've got a piece of parchment paper down to protect our work surface here. So now that our cups are prepped and everything, we're gonna use those same squeegee tools that have that centerpiece here to lay down and then we're gonna put these face up. So that way when we work, they're just gonna lay right here and they can rest whether you're gonna leave them for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or even overnight. Now a tip is, if you read the back of this, if you're gonna leave these overnight, maybe wrap them with saran wrap or a piece of um, saran wrap or something like that to help hold that in. And then that's going to help that kind of work overnight as well. All right, so let's get going. So what you wanna do is pour some of this into a cup so that way you can um, easily dip into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of this into just a little wine glass here I've got. Just a little pile like that. We don't wanna overdo it because we're gonna end up wasting this essentially. So just a little bit goes a long way. And then I've just got a little foam brush here. And what you wanna do is put this on nice and thick. If you have ever done glass engraving, think of it in the exact same way. So whenever you engrave glass, you wanna put it on there nice and thick, and then go back every once in a while. You can use a toothpick or even use your little weeding tool if you want to, to kind of move pieces around to see how it's going. Okay, so nice and thick. Because the point is, if I can see any of this paint underneath, then it's not getting any of the, it's not working, right? All right. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna dip in there like so, and then I'm just dabbing. So instead of doing like a brush motion, I'm just gonna dab this. You may wanna completely wrap the entire, the entire cup. So we're gonna see how thick this is, because if it starts to drip at all, um, it's gonna go around to that back side of the tumbler. So hopefully we don't have any of that. All right, so once you have everything coated, you're gonna let it set for around 30 minutes or so. You can come back and check these by taking a little weeding tool here, like I said, a toothpick, and then just scraping at the areas that you were obviously engraving to see if that paint is starting to come off. Now, another thing that I'm doing while I'm waiting for these, I would recommend doing one at a time, but if you're like me and you're doing multiple, I go by every few seconds and I check the edges. So as they start to drip, I take another clean brush here and then I just wipe it on the side of the glass there. So I'll go by here and I'll go ahead and get this edge. That way you don't have to wrap this entire cup. You don't have a whole lot of dripping. Now, if you wanna wrap the entire cup and not worry about it and just let it go down onto, say for example, your parchment paper, you can definitely do so. So once again, I'm just going by every few minutes or so and I'll check to see if I need to go around and wipe off those sides and like I said I just kind of wipe it there on the cup. So once again it's it's been about 30 minutes for me. Now remember some of these are powder coated, some of them have a paint coating, so we're just putting them all to test here. So the one that I really seem to be having a little bit of struggle with is the Ozark one. I think it's all gonna come off. I can notice if I start to do this, I notice some color changing, like the paint's lifting. So I almost feel like if this one needs a little bit more time, probably let this set for an entire hour or so if you can, and the Ozark one should probably come off pretty clean. It may still come off, but we're gonna go ahead and test it at this point. I can tell that um, this one and the Kid Cup seems to be lifting, and then for sure the wine glass is ready to go. You can really tell because you can feel that metal on metal um, where something like this, you may feel it's still, you know, tapping onto some gushy stuff, if that makes sense. 
So for like this one, I get a little bit of metal, but I can tell, I can really tell. You're gonna be able to get that feel. I can tell that I feel like this guy needs some more time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna run these over to the sink because that's what you would do at home. You're gonna go to the sink and you're gonna rinse everything off. I highly recommend that you get yourself some gloves to do this. It does recommend um, some gloves here on the back. Get yourself some gloves, rinse this off in the sink really, really well. I almost wanna recommend that you rinse it outside with the hose, honestly, because you don't want to remove, say for example, my sink is powder coated. You don't want to take off any of that. So I would recommend really doing it outside. So I'm actually going to take this. I have a porcelain sink. I'm going to use this, rinse all of that off, and then I'm going to use that sponge to scrub this. I'm going to show you this one in a little cake pan with some water just so you guys can really see what's happening here, what you would be doing your sink. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to go rinse these and then we're going to get ready to wash this one off. All right, so now that I have washed these three, look at how amazing these came out. So, so nice. And if you see little edges that need to be cleaned up, throw it in your dishwasher, see what that can do. And if it doesn't take it off, then just take your little weeding tool and you can definitely go by and clean up those edges. So as you can see, it is so, so nice. Love the way that one came out. This one's a really big, chunky design, and as you can see, it came out amazing. So hopefully you guys can see all of that fine detail. There's a little bit of splattering here and there that needs to come off, but I think once again, the dishwasher will finish getting that off as well. And for our last one of the ones that I've washed, this one was a fell. So this is the Ozark. And as you can see, it wanted to start going and this would have been amazing. So as you can see here, that detail would have been so cool inside of this design. But I would, if I tried it again, I'm probably gonna do a test for you guys just to do like a square and see if I left this overnight, if it would take this coating off. So this is only made to take off so much materials and this may just be one that it's not going to. You can see that it started too, but all of this down here, it did not want to come off. But this was definitely a fail, but I'm really excited to really test it out. So I kind of want to do a square, like I said. So if you guys want to see that, definitely let me know down below. But I'm trying things out so you guys don't have to. So the Ozark ones with this coating, I would avoid. All right, so let's go ahead and wash off the last one. All right, so for our last one, I'm gonna do it inside of this little dish here so that way you guys can kind of see the process, but you're gonna do it over at the sink under running water. All right, so what I have found with the sponges, they work better if they stay dry. So you don't want to get this sopping wet. It works better once this thing is dry and this is gonna be brushing off that remaining pieces. And you really wanna do that while your stencil piece is still on there so it's, you're not scratching everything else up. All right, so, and I really wanna try a Brillo pad just to see what that does. Like, you know, the little metal ones. So if we wanna see this video done again, trying out different things, let me know in the comments below. All right, the very first thing I'm gonna do, since I'm doing it here, now over the sink, I would rinse all of this off, all right? So you, I'm gonna go ahead and do, just do a baby wipe since I'm here in the craft room. I would not recommend doing this in your craft space, but this is just so you guys can see everything. So I'm just gonna use that baby wipe to do all that so that way it just makes it easier in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to rinse all of this off here. And you can see I'm taking my fingernail here and I'm able to just scratch this stuff off. So you wanna work fairly quickly to do so. So you can definitely find something that works for you. I tried my little squeegee tool that didn't really work out the greatest. And then you can take that little sponge just to kind of really help brush that off. But I have found using my fingernails with a glove on, really helped get this stuff going first. So I went ahead and did this first. All right, now the one thing that it does say is to go with the grain. So I believe my grain is sideways here. So if you work with the grain, it will work a whole lot better. So I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on chugging. So you see how using my fingernail, and I'm not even doing that much pressure and I'm doing it through the gloves here. Um, it's coming right off. So the Brillo pad is more, for your finished stuff, if you will. I would say um, using one of the more stiff, you know, the one that doesn't have the sponge on it would probably work a whole lot better. So once again, I'm just gonna go through here and I'm just using my fingernail here to scratch this off. Now, the one thing about you'd say, okay, well, can I just use my weeding tool? Um, you will scratch your metal. So you do wanna be gentle with that. So the very first thing you can see, I just kind of went through here with my nail. I'm gonna rinse it off and hopefully you guys can see so far, this is what we've got. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I wet it anyways. I'm gonna go ahead and go through here. This one may be a little bit better with the wet sponge. So I've kind of found, I'm kind of figuring it out and 
when I was at the sink, it kind of seemed to work better when it was dry, but this one seems to be working a whole lot better when it's a little bit wet. All right, so we're gonna keep on chugging. Now, some of this that's coming through is actually my underneath my stencil. So when you're doing this, you're starting to tear up that stencil and you may notice some of the other color come through. So we're actually, and you won't be able to scratch that off. It's not gonna scratch off very easy with this sponge, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and keep on chugging there. Looks good. So once you think you have everything, you're ready to start peeling off that tape. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna peel off the tape and the, uh, the stencil material. And there you guys have it. Look at how amazing that is. And we did this with our Cricut. Now any of those little pieces you need to clean up. Once again, the dishwasher should clean those up for you. You can even see I'm just taking my fingernail and I could brush anything off as well. Mama needs a pint. We did this on a curved surface, a wine glass. So we etched this out, engraved it, if you will, on the metal tumblers. How super cool is this? This is one from Walmart as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys another little uh, sneak peek of these one more time, just so you can see how those look. I really think the wine glass came out absolutely amazing. I am obsessed. There you guys have it. How amazing was this? I hope you guys try this out. If you guys do, make sure you guys join our Facebook community group. We'll have it linked down below for you guys so you guys can share your finished products. I wanna see if you guys are gonna be making this or trying this hack out. If you've already tried it out, let me know your thoughts below. Once again, this is something that you can even do if you are doing the glitter tumblers with epoxy, you could strip all of that off so that way you have a fresh tumbler if you wanted. So once again, I hope you guys have enjoyed this if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one